Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. In this one, we actually start tackling a little bit of the abilities before we finish our research. So I'd like to actually go into the abilities right away because they're going to be dependent on the research. Say you research um, the hair strike, then it's now available for you to use it in the abilities tab. And we pretty much lay down our thing here. So we have this ability manager and we also have a base class that we'll be using. Um, every single ability is going to be in everything from this one. And then we'll make our own action in every single one of those. So, guys, that is what we're going to do today. We're going to lay down the ground for our abilities. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we've got quite a lot to do today. Um, in the last episode, we implemented, we finally finished implementing the research. Now this research doesn't really have an effect yet, we say that you gain 10% more gold on sending item and uh, we're simply going to be putting a simple if statement somewhere but before we even get into putting some action in those research, we want to be tackling the abilities because these one are going to depend a little bit on the research so I'd like to have it so you can research some ability and then use them afterward like uh, as soon as you complete the research they are now available and that's why I want to start implementing the ability uh, stuff today and uh, there's a lot of code today but it's fairly like simple it's pretty much what we've been doing this whole time but this time we actually do it for the abilities so we are going to open up the tower script that is the first place we'll actually start off we are going to declare a public float array just like the research so we're going to be um, storing in the save when is the last time you actually cast this ability so public float abilities and um, we go down there in our load function. Where is our load? Over here. That's our load function. And we just copy all of this. And instead of research, we do abilities. Oh, abilities. So I forgot an I. Let me just go up here, fix that really quickly. Oh, there we go. And we now proceed with the rest, so we need an enum that we'll call ability. Right now we don't have it, so I'll just type it in. Uh, we replace it here. This is the array's abilities. Ability name. And this is also the abilities array. So I've done that in a weird order, but pretty much replace every research by ability. And that is it for the load. Now we go down to the save over here. Copy this. This is abilities.length. Same thing. So ability name. Getting from the enum we don't have yet. That we're going to call ability like this. And we set that. Abilities like this. Okay, so good times. We've done the exact same thing we've been doing every time we, we want to save something. So... Uh, we're starting to get quite a lot of things in our save structure and that's cool. That means we're almost done. So, um, we've got all of this. Now, what's the next step? We are going to go and start declaring some new scripts. The first one is going to be the ability manager. So, I right click here, create. And this is the ability manager. Now, this ability manager needs to be outside of the game as well. So, it needs to be able to... Um, be called from the hub because there is some ability that are not going to be in-game related such as you can watch an ad and get some currency bats uh, back so that is an ability that you're going to be able to press while you're playing the game but also outside of the game that is why I'm going to put this ability manager on my tower and uh, we can't because we have some error we need to fix it before we actually put our stuff in there so our error says that we don't have any enum called ability. Now um, I think that the ability manager is the best place to declare it so let's do public enum ability and let's just um, think really quickly about what we could be using as an ability. Let's go with like boost morale which is going to be a boost in attack speed and maybe damage something like that. So nothing too complicated and I'll just leave this one here for now. Now we do have an enum called ability and we should not have any more error down here and here it is. So I can go in my tower, drag and drop my ability manager and it's going to be right there. Okay. 
So, as always, public static ability manager instance. We're going to declare an instance set get that we usually just set inside of a awake call. Now, this awake call is really important. It's not a start because this is going to be called. I want I want the instance to be called before the tower calls it starts. So, really important not to put start in there. We are going to do this in a awake. And then I'll manually call the start from the tower. And you'll see how it goes in a moment when I actually implement it. Um, okay, so this is what we got here. We got a simple ability manager. This contains the enum. Now, um, we've got the pretty much exact same thing in the research. But there is one key difference to the research and um, to the abilities. The research is a one-time thing. And all it really does in memory is toggle a, uh, a bit in a bit array. So basically we've got the unlocked research bit array and this is where everything happens. So if you're done with the research, it just toggles the bit on or off. Now the ability is going to be a little bit more different. It might actually last, say, say we do a boost morale, then it might last for 30 seconds. So our tower is empowered for 30 seconds. Now we could be like toggling bits on and off, but our ability might get a little bit more complex. So say you're actually converting currency from gold to uh, to diamonds or something like that, then is it even worth it to toggle that bit on and off? That's pretty much useless. So what I'd like to do is have another class, have what we'll call a base ability, and every single ability is going to derive from that. Now this might look complicated in concept, but it's fairly simple. I will go ahead and create a new folder in here. That's my new folder I do in my ability. That's bad. We should have done a lot more. Um, but let's just start with that. Inside of that folder, I will create something that I'll call base ability. Make sure you don't... Oh, ability. Okay, make sure you don't um, actually name this ability because we already got a type ability here, which is an enum. So in base ability, there is a lot of things and I don't want to get started in there just yet. Let's just go back to our ability manager. Now that this exists, we are going to be able to call uh, the base ability type. So my ability manager is going to have a public base ability array abilities. Or you know what, this is actually going to be a list. So we're not so we can actually use the dot find in an easy manner. Um, so include system collection generic. This is going to be a list, a list of base ability that we'll call abilities, which is a set get. Now this way we can actually call the dot find. Okay, so this is going to work. Great. Um, Okay, cool. Now, whenever we actually uh, boot the game, we are going to call the instances equal to this, but we're also going to get all the little ability scripts that is on our tower. So I'm actually planning to put all our uh, derived base ability on the tower itself. So this way, all I got to be saying here is abilities is equal to get components base ability. And this should actually do the job. Okay, so this might not actually work, and no, it is not because we're getting a uh, array of base abilities, and this is a list. So I'll just iterate through it. Simple as that. The abilities up here. This is going to be a new list, and we're going to do a for each on that. So for each base ability, a in get component base ability like this we are going to say abilities dot add and we're adding a this way we should actually get a list out of this okay so no more errors and we are going to proceed with what we have to do so we've got the, the uh, private void awake let's create a public void in it and this is pretty much going to be my start, but uh, the reason I'm making it something else than start is because I want to be able to control it from outside. So basically, at the very start of my tower, I'll be calling the init of this ability manager. 
And in this init, I would like to do for each base ability A in abilities, so iterate through my list for each element in my list, we're going to do A dot initialize, which is not a function we have yet, but we are about to code inside of the base ability script. And uh, talking about that, let's actually head over right to that base ability script and actually start calling this. So let's do public void init so we can satisfy our compilator and I have no errors so this is what we get something clean we have the ability manager over here nothing crashes good times we can actually go ahead and start coding this mess so um, what exactly do we need in a certain ability we need to know a few things so we're gonna have some getters function that is going to be able to tell us okay is this ability active right now is it ready and how much does it cost? So, to do that, I plan on keeping all that information public at the very top. So, let's start with a public ability to know which one we actually have. So, is it boost morale or convert gold or something like that? Now, just below this, I will also put the cost of that ability in case there, in case there is actually one. So, public currency, currency, public int cost of that currency so you can choose is this going to cost gold is this going to call magic bricks or diamonds and then we just put the amount in the public end cost right just below this I will do public float cooldown so how long do I have to wait before I can reuse that ability public float duration if there is one so if it is like boost morale uh, you can use this every five minutes and it lasts 30 seconds private float last cast this is just to know well when was the last time you guessed it so we can actually calculate the cooldown and the is active using the duration cool so this is our initialize function It's going to be called at the very beginning of our game while that happens I'd like to actually use the last cast right here so we'd like to actually assign that to our saved value so last cast is equal to the tower dot instance abilities at int ability and this way we actually store back the value inside of the last cast now this last cast is going to help us um, in our getters function so let's start writing those public bool ability active which will mean okay is our ability right now um, active is it like during the 30 seconds of the duration so Really simple, we're going to start with a if last cast is equal equal to zero. That means we never actually use the ability. That means we never actually even press the button once. So return false. If we never press the button, then the ability is not active in the first place. Now, if we did press the button at one point, we got to be checking. So is this during the first 30 seconds after you press on last cast? So return last cast plus the duration bigger equal than the tower dot instance total playtime. Now if this is true, then the ability is active and if it is false, it is not and we simply put it in the return statement right away. So whoever calls this function is going to have the good result inside the return parameter. Now just below this, something really similar, I'll do ability ready. Can I use it right now or is it still in cooldown? And inside of here, same thing. So if last cast is equal equal to zero, that means we never actually use ability and let's return true because if you never used it, it should be ready from the get go. But it has a cost. So, I mean, you might not be able to use it right away. And just below this, return the tower that instance that total playtime minus last cast is bigger or equal than cooldown. Now, if this is bigger or equal then the cooldown value that means we are ready to use it again and if it is not we get the, the um, false boolean instead of our return value now this sounds all good in theory and um, we won't actually be able to test it out today but we're gonna have laid at least the ground floor of that um, so let's keep actually lying down that ground floor we only need two more functions or maybe three yeah let's go with three and it is the cast function, so when, when the action actually happens. So public 
oops public void cast and that is what is going to be called whenever we press on that use button so if now check for currency check for oh you know what let's do it right away um, public bull charge costs charge the player money if charge cost is false oops if charge cost is false that will mean that uh, we were unable to actually charge a player because he didn't have enough money or something of the sort if that's false let's do a return if that isn't false that means we're able to cast this let's go ahead and just do the whole casting um, logic so the first thing I'll do in here is the tower instance the total playtime I'll get the current playtime I'll start inside of the last cast Right after that, I'll actually set my abilities um, float array to that very last cast. This is where the value is being saved. And of course, when it is completed, we do the action. That's going to be our final function right here. So this final function is never going to be defined in the base ability because it's going to be different for every single one of those. If you're converting money, then in that action function, you want to be taking money, then um, deducing it, and then adding some more on the other currency. Or if your action is act actually to uh, do an AOE strike on the floor, then it's going to have a different logic. It's going to have a different way to handle this. And this is why we are going to take our function the action function and we'll make it a protected virtual void that we'll call action. This way we can override it in every single person that inherits from that. And inside of my protect virtual I'll do action is not implemented in plus this dot to string. This way we actually know um, well, if we haven't override this function, this is what it's going to be called, and we'll have a link to the very script that is not working. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Let's do the uh, charge costs, and then that will be it. So we're charging the player money. Let's do if cost is smaller or equal to the tower dot instance currencies at the index int currency. If that's the case, that means we do have enough money. And if we do have enough money, we're going to say the tower dot instance currencies at int currency again is minus equal to the cost. And we're going to say return true here so we can do a return false there. And um, there's also an additional step that I like to do. Now I've did talk about this being able to use this outside of the game, so maybe in the hub. If I'm trying to update the game UI while I'm in the hub, then this is actually going to crash and I'm not going to get my return value back. So I will do a if game UI that instance just like this. And that will check is there an instance if there is one. Oh, you know what? Actually this is going to break it, is it? Hmm. Okay, so let's do game UI dot instance is equal equal to is not equal to null. Then if it does exist, we'll do game UI dot instance update currency text. Good, so this should actually work in theory. Now of course sadly we cannot test it and we've done a lot of code, so that's kinda that's kinda bad, but in the next one we'll start implementing the first ability, which is the boost morale. And we'll also go inside of the game and actually start tweaking the UI a little bit like we always do. So start messing around with this thing over here, the abilities panel. And just put the put some stuff in there. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. And if you have any comment or question, you can leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, please subscribe for more tutorials like these. And I will see you guys in the next one.